Good morning. Today we will be discussing the doctrinal definition, tasks, and characteristics of an area reconnaissance and an area surveillance. This will be a doctrinal brief, not a tactics brief, and so will differ slightly from the other presentations that we have done so far. It is important that we understand the doctrinal terms, not only for development of soldiers, but also so that when we're tasked with a mission, such as an area of reconnaissance, we understand all of the implications of the order and have an immediate shared understanding with our leaders of what we must do to gain victory. With that in mind, approach this brief thinking to yourself, if I was a squadron commander and I needed information regarding something, would an area of reconnaissance or an area of surveillance or something else be the appropriate tool to employ in that situation? With that, we'll get started. In conducting an area of reconnaissance, it is critical to understand a subtle differenti differentiation in reconnaissance and surveillance. This is a difference that, frankly, the Army does a poor job of articulating because there is some significant overlap, and the only definition available in doctrine for surveillance is an FM 3-55.93, Long Range Surveillance Operations, and even then, it does not appear until page 67. But I digress. Per the most recent Army doctrine, reconnaissance is a mission to obtain, by visual observation or other detection methods, information about the activities and resources of an enemy or adversary, or to secure data concerning the meteorological, hydrographic, or geographic characteristics of a particular area. This broad mission could include actions that we consider to be reconnaissance or surveillance. However, note that the Army defines surveillance as a systematic observation of airspace or surface area by visual, oral, electronic, photographic, or other means. FM 3-55.93 defines surveillance, but it also defines reconnaissance as any action taken to obtain information about the operational area, including visual or other detection methods, taken to learn the enemy or potential enemy's activities and resources in the area's meteorological, hydrographic, or geographic characteristics. Okay, so that's a lot of words. They don't always connect to what eight men walking through the jungle need to do. As often happens, doctrine, get dis doctrine gets distilled at the tactical level, and ATP 3-20.98 has the best explanation, and the only explanation that I've seen so far. Surveillance is passive and continuous. I would also add that it is stationary. Reconnaissance is active, involves combat maneuver, and fighting for information. When you think of a sea troop, think of us as the reconnaissance-capable surveillance asset of the brigade. We are the best of the best, the elite, the chosen one, to conduct surveillance for the brigade. Great. Now that we've talked a lot about surveillance and what it is, we're going to talk about area reconnaissance. We'll discuss area surveillance later. Area reconnaissance is a form of reconnaissance that focuses on obtaining detailed information about the terrain or enemy activity within a prescribed area. Area reconnaissance allows for a detailed reconnaissance in specific locations that answers PIR and develops a situation to provide options to the commander. The commander assigns an area reconnaissance when information on the enemy situation is limited, when focused reconnaissance in a given area will likely yield specific information related to terrain or decision points, or when more detailed information is required in a designated area. Essentially, area reconnaissance is focused on one specific place, such as an airfield, low water crossing, bridge, etc., that is relevant to the commander's decision making. Given that there is only one sea troop in the brigade, and that we have unique capabilities that are extremely reliant on stealth, at our level, the most likely targets that we will be assigned are targets of brigade relevance that cannot be reconnoitered with higher profile assets. That is, the target itself is either so sensitive or so well defended that the brigade commander needs a unit that will not be detected to gain observation of the target. Once this observation is gained, there are specific tasks associated with an area reconnaissance. They are find and report all enemy within the area, reconnoiter specific terrain within the area, and report reconnaissance information. Basically, the area of reconnaissance is focused on all enemy and specific terrain in an area and reporting on any influence it has on the commander's decision making. There are six other tasks associated with an area of reconnaissance. The first is the most complex, reconnoiter all terrain within the area. This is different from the specific terrain in that the PIR may center on a specific terrain feature, such as a hill or depression. All terrain in the area, however, refers to all other terrain features that may not be specifically named in the commander's CCIR, but may influence the terrain he does designate. For example, C Troop may be instructed to reconnoiter a hilltop on which there is a templated air defense system. After confirming the presence of the air defense system, there are still two hours until LTIOV, or the last time information is of value. 
and the C troop may leave one team in place to maintain visual contact with that ADA system, while a second team reconnoiters a nearby draw that may provide a dismounted avenue of approach for an infantry battalion attack to seize that hilltop and destroy the ADA system. By reconnoitering all terrain in the area, the C troop is able to generate more options for the brigade commander to counter the enemy. The second task is to inspect and classify all bridges within the area, the third locate forwards or crossing sites near all bridges within the area, and the fourth to inspect and classify all overpasses, underpasses, and culverts. These three tasks are fairly straightforward. Classifying the bridges, even unnamed bridges, will provide further options to the commander for infiltration into the AO, as will locating the forwards and the overpasses. The fifth task, to locate and clear all mines, obstacles, and barriers, barriers in the area within the team's capability, is more for other reconnaissance units than the C troop. The sixth, to locate a bypass around built-up areas, obstacles, and contaminated areas, is an implied task if the team is moving towards an NAI. Reporting on it, however, is an additional task that enables the follow-on forces to infiltrate into the area of operations. We have two methods for the conduct of an area reconnaissance in C troop. These are not doctrinal terms, but are rather the terms that we use to differentiate two methods that we employ in C troop. We also have a third mission, area surveillance. These three missions form the core of our reconnaissance and surveillance capabilities. We have an additional security mission, such as a screen, that we can conduct, as well as other reconnaissance tasks, but the most important are these three here. The first is based on the Ranger School Area Reconnaissance, and thus is designated a Ranger Team Area Reconnaissance. This method employs two RNS teams, reconnaissance and surveillance teams, of two soldiers each, and a security and observation position, designated SNO, as well as a deliberately emplaced ORP. It is suitable for reconnoitering objectives that have a high risk of compromise, where the team will be displacing from the objective after only a few hours. The second method is the team cavalry area reconnaissance, which splits the team into two fire teams of four soldiers each. This method allows the team to complete a full reconnaissance of the NAI, but has left precise direct fire, but does not have the precise direct fire control of the ranger method. However, this method does allow the team to rendezvous on the far side of the objective, allowing them to continue movement without reconsolidating on the near side of the objective and then moving to the far side. This saves the team time. Our teams can also complete an area surveillance. This is a traditional sea troop operation in which the team splits into a hide site team and a surveillance site team and maintains observation of an objective for a long duration. There are multiple tasks of an area surveillance per FM 3-55.93. They are synthesized into these four tasks below. These tasks are, first, detect enemy presence, pinpoint its location, and observe the activity. Second, identify the enemy unit, formation, or equipment, and evaluate their capabilities. Third, confirm or deny assumptions about the enemy. And fourth, report all information in a timely manner. This mission, as well as area reconnaissance, will be covered in greater detail in their respective lessons in the Reconnaissance 20 board videos. In conclusion, today we've addressed, first, the definitions of area reconnaissance and area surveillance, second, the tasks of an area reconnaissance and area surveillance, and third, the methods for area reconnaissance and area surveillance. The following resources were used in preparing this presentation. Send any questions or comments to charlietrooptactics at outlook.com.